So, OpenAI has been digging deep into one of the strangest and most frustrating issues in AI, hallucinations. That's when a model like ChatGPT just makes something up, delivers it with total confidence, and it turns out to be completely wrong. Their latest research paper lays it out pretty clearly. The way models are trained and tested actually rewards them for guessing instead of admitting they don't know. Think of it like this. If you're taking a multiple choice exam and you're stuck, leaving the question blank guarantees you zero points. But if you throw out a random guess, you might get lucky. Over time, that guessing strategy can boost your score even if you're wrong most of the time. Models do the exact same thing. They've basically been trained to be good test takers, not cautious thinkers. OpenAI ran an interesting comparison between two models, the older O4 Mini and a smaller one called GPT-5 Thinking Mini. On a simple QA benchmark, O4 Mini hit a slightly better accuracy rate, 24% compared to 22%. Sounds like a win, right? Well, not so fast. Its error rate was a whopping 75% compared to only 26% for the newer model. Why? Because O4 Mini rarely abstained. It almost never said, I don't know, while GPT-5 Thinking Mini refused to answer over half the time, 52% abstention. That humility dropped its accuracy number, but also cut down hallucinations massively. And this is where OpenAI's frustration really comes through. The leaderboards and scoreboards everyone uses to compare models mostly reward accuracy. They don't care if a model throws out confident nonsense as long as some of the guesses happen to land correctly. So developers are incentivized to build guess-happy systems rather than careful ones. Now OpenAI says there's a fix, and honestly, it's not rocket science. Penalize wrong answers more heavily than silence and give some partial credit for expressing uncertainty. Standardized tests have used this for years, some even dock points for incorrect guesses, so you think twice before filling in bubbles randomly. AI needs the same principle baked into its evaluation systems. Without it, we'll keep seeing models that sound sure of themselves but spew falsehoods. Speaking of falsehoods, OpenAI has been under pressure. They say GPT-5 produces 46% fewer hallucinations than GPT-4.0, which is a huge claim. But independent groups aren't letting them off easy. NewsGuard, a US company, ran a study and found ChatGPT models still spread falsehoods about 40% of the time. So yeah, things are getting better, but we're nowhere near hallucination proof. Now, here's the part most people overlook, how this actually ties back to you. All right, so. While everyone else is busy just watching AI videos, you can already be using AI to build automated income streams that make money while you sleep. The Faceless Empire just went live. It's the complete system for creating YouTube channels that generate $3,000 to $5,000 monthly without ever showing your face on camera or recording your own voice. AI writes the scripts, AI creates the voiceovers, you just upload and collect the checks. It's the same system that helped me generate over $42,000 last month. You get nine comprehensive modules, done for you AI prompts, 20 proven profitable niches, step-by-step -step video tutorials, 60 day money back guarantee. This is three years of testing and perfecting handed to you on a silver platter for way less than a new iPhone. But remember, only 200 founding member spots. Once they're filled, enrollment closes and won't reopen at this price. Click that link in the description right now. Don't stand on the sidelines while others build automated AI income with this. All right, now back to the research. The paper also digs into why these errors show up in the first place. It all starts with how language models learn. Pre-training is about predicting the next word over and over again on massive amounts of text. There's no true or false labels for statements in that data. The model isn't told this sentence is factually accurate or this one is garbage. It only sees fluent language and tries to mimic it. That works beautifully for patterns with clear rules, spelling, grammar, parentheses, those basically disappear as problems as models scale up. But facts, totally different. Some information just doesn't follow predictable patterns. OpenAI gives the example of labeling cat and dog pictures by their birthdays. You could have millions of labeled images, but birthdays are essentially random. The algorithm will never nail that task because there's no pattern to exploit. Same with certain facts. Unless the model has seen the exact piece of information in training, it's guessing. 
And this is where those confident mistakes come in. When asked something like Adam Tauman Kalai's dissertation title or birthday, he's one of the paper's authors, the model spat out multiple answers, all wrong. It's not that the model was sloppy, it's that the task was fundamentally unanswerable with the data it had. Smaller models might even have an easier time here if they know they don't speak Maori, for example. They can just admit it. Larger models that know a bit might overestimate their confidence and end up hallucinating. Now here's another layer that makes this more than just a technical issue. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, is starting to feel the consequences of this whole AI-generated blur in his own digital life. On X, which used to be Twitter, he admitted that social media now feels fake to him. He literally said he assumes posts are all bots, even when he knows some trends are real, like the growth of OpenAI's codex. That's the irony. The guy running the company behind these insanely human-like models is now saying he can't tell what's real anymore. And honestly, he's not alone. Cybersecurity firm Imperva estimated that more than half of all web traffic now comes from bots or large language models. X's own bot system, Grok, suggested hundreds of millions of bots are active daily. That's not a fringe issue. That's the mainstream internet. Altman also pointed out this weird feedback loop. AI systems copy how humans talk, but then humans pick up quirks from AI. So conversations online start blending into this artificial tone where you can't really separate human from machine anymore. He even admitted in a Reddit AMA that real people have started to sound like large language models. And that's not just some throwaway remark. It's a reflection of how culture itself is shifting. Even OpenAI's latest products haven't escaped trust issues. GPT-5's rollout came with complaints about wasted credits, personality changes, and incomplete answers. So while the company is pushing the narrative that they're solving hallucinations, users are still seeing plenty of problems. Altman went as far as calling social media an authenticity crisis. And critics think there's more to the story. Some reports say OpenAI is exploring its own social network to rival X and Facebook. If that's true, Altman calling current platforms bots saturated, echo chambers could be strategic, set the stage for an authentic alternative. But researchers warn that even AI-only networks quickly fall into biases and echo chambers of their own. So we've got two sides of the same coin here. On one hand, OpenAI is saying, we understand hallucinations, here's the mechanism, here's how to fix evaluation methods. On the other hand, Altman is openly admitting that even he can't trust the authenticity of online spaces anymore. The same systems designed to make communication more fluid are now undermining trust. And the technical part matters because hallucinations aren't just random glitches. They follow from the math of next word prediction and the incentives baked into evaluation. And the cultural part matters because people are starting to feel that digital conversations themselves don't feel human anymore. And when you look at the numbers, it's clear why people are uneasy. GPT-5 may be almost 50% better than GPT-4.0 in reducing falsehoods, but 40% of answers in NewsGuard's test were still false. Imperva says bots make up more than half of web traffic. X admits to hundreds of millions of bots on the platform every single day. That scale means it's not just about hallucinations in some research paper. It's about whether any of us can really trust what we're seeing online. So yeah, hallucinations aren't just a quirky side effect. They're built into the very way language models are trained and judged. And unless those incentives shift, AI will keep guessing, people will keep doubting, and the line between human and machine will keep getting fuzzier. Before I go, just remember, Faceless Empire is up and running, but only for the first 200 people. Hit the link in the description and secure your spot. That's where I'll leave it. Drop your thoughts down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.